Did USC and UCLA overplay their hands in the transfer portal? The Rams rediscover their inner cavemen. And Kawhi Leonard is optimistic about the Clippers' season, but let's be real, that's a story we've heard before. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the faithful Angelino's Morning Report. So it is October 16th, 2023. I am obviously back home with the wife. It is a wonderful time to be alive when you're back home with the wife. We also added a new subscriber to the Angelino Familia yesterday. Thank you for getting in on the ground floor. And if you like being in the know about LA sports, clickety-clack the like button, clickety-clack the subscribe button. There's a notification bell, hit that. It'll let you know when we drop new content. Sharing is caring, let people know we exist, and by all means, comment. It's always cool talking about LA sports. So, before we go through the news and notes, a look at the scoreboard. Yesterday at SoFi, Kyron Williams went bananas in the second half. Rushed for 154 of his 158 yards in the second half. Cooper Cup also gets 148 receiving yards. Rams 26, Arizona 9. Meanwhile, Aris, uh, <laughs> Angel City FC has qualified for the NWSL playoffs for the first time in its history after a 5-1 victory over the Portland Thorns. Five different players scored for Angel City FC. They're going to advance to face the OL Reign, wherever the O-Hell they are, in the first round on Sunday. Today, the Dallas Cowboys are in town to play the Chargers at 515. Austin Eckler is expected to play. But let's get to the news. To set up the first topic, I want to bring up the AP Top 25. USC fell. And when I mean fell, I don't mean they just slipped on a banana peel and fell on their ass. No, I mean their fall was like watching Wild E. Coyote sprinting off the edge of the cliff and his little legs churning for another 10 seconds until he realizes there's nothing under his feet. Whew. Went from 10 to 18 with that one loss. With that one loss. There are four Pac-12 teams that are ranked higher than the Trojans, including teams in the Pac-12 with losses. So what that tells you is, scribes don't think that the Trojans are gonna win the Pac-12. They don't believe the Trojans are gonna to go to the college football playoff, and they certainly don't believe they're gonna win the national title. I have to be honest with you and say that dropping eight spots is a little harsh, despite how bad the Trojans looked in South Bend over the weekend. But we recognize reality here at Faithful Angelino Sports. Much of this is a problem of USC's own making. And so for the last couple of days, I've been trying to diagnose how this problem has come about. We already know about the defense. We've talked ad nauseum about them. But I was reading The, I was reading the Athletic. I was reading ESPN.com, CBS Sports, Fox Sports, all kinds of sources. And nothing was resonating until I read something from the LA Times. There is a columnist there who, instead of saying we should be heaping scorn on Lincoln Riley and the Trojans, that we should be having patience. I'm not saying you should buy this yet, but I want to lay out the case and set up the rest of everything I want to discuss with this. The argument is Lincoln Riley was hired to rebuild the program from the ashes that was left behind with Clay Helton. That last season's schedule was actually super easy and the Trojans benefited, right? So now that they have a tougher schedule with a team that isn't entirely built yet, maybe we shouldn't be so upset. Now, do you buy that? Do you? I don't, <laughs> but I do give the writer credit because he was trying to think logically and try to come up with another rationale for us to deal with instead of just heaping scorn on the obvious. And it did get me to thinking. It got me to thinking because when Lincoln Riley first came in, he had to bring in a lot of people through the transfer portal. He brought in Caleb Williams. He brought in a bunch of wide receivers. He brought in new running backs, right? But you remember the one thing that he did not have to do last time? When he got here, he didn't have to have an build an offensive line. It was gifted to him 
on a silver freaking platter. Four returning starters. All he had to do is find one guy. So the offensive line was straight, but a lot of them left for the NFL. So as a result, Lincoln Riley goes back to the transfer portal and adds at least three new starters. And what's the result? Caleb Williams got sacked six times. He's been running around trying to find uh, time to get a pass off the, for pretty much the entire season. But it's not just USC. Look over to UCLA. UC, Chip Kelly had to replace three starters on the offensive line as well. And so what's been the result? Did you know that UCLA, despite all of the great things they've been doing on defense, to, when it comes to protecting their own quarterback, they are 114th in the nation. They have, been, they have allowed their own quarterback to get sacked 20 times. And by the way, it's not just USC and UCLA. For all the praise that people have been giving Deion Sanders, Coach Prime in his cowboy hat, for trying to rebuild Colorado on the fly, he had to rebuild his offensive line through the transfer portal. Colorado allows their quarterbacks to be sacked five times per game. Five times. USC, UCLA, and Colorado. Anybody will tell you that you can get individual players, wide receivers, teaching the receiving tree. You, a quarterback, these are your progressions. Running back, this is where the hole is going to be. But the offensive line is different because you're asking five different people to function as a single unit. That takes a lot of time. So what do we know now? Well, we know you can get a lot of talent through the transfer portal, but you damn sure can't get the continuity that's needed on the offensive line. If the Trojans are going or the Bruins are going to try to build something through traditional recruiting, you have to do it through the offensive line. You have to bring them in as freshmen and teach them along the way. That is the problem with going through the transfer portal. We mentioned that USC slid in the AP top 25, so did the Bruins. They are 25th in that poll. They also have a problem. Not just, to, uh, not just with the offensive line, but with their own quarterback. We know they're starting a freshman, Dante Moore, and had he struggled. The guy's thrown pick sixes in three consecutive games. But last week in Oregon State, backup Colin Schley took a shot to the chest and didn't return. So what happens now if Colin Schley can't play? Ethan Garbers hasn't even been in a game since he held the ball for a PAT attempt over in Utah a few weeks ago. That's a problem, guys. This is the problem when you didn't necessarily know who was going to be your starting quarterback for so long. Now, for the record, I completely disagree. I mentioned a Times columnist a few minutes ago. I completely disagree with LA Times writer Ben Bolch, who wondered aloud if this is Chip Kelly's worst coaching season at UCLA. I don't think that's fair. If we're going to give Lincoln Riley the benefit of the doubt because Lincoln Riley rebuilt the Trojans through the transfer portal and didn't come up roses across the board, then maybe, just maybe, we have to give Chip Kelly the same benefit of the doubt. Besides, Chip Kelly's not stupid. He knew the defense was a problem last year, and he hired DeAnton Lynn to fix it. We've been talking a lot about the offensive lines for both college teams. What do you say we continue with the Rams? There is a cliche, if you've ever watched drama, like your, your CW high school dramas, and the football team is struggling, and the random actor that they have to play the coach always comes in, and he's fussing and cussing and fuming and throwing chairs around, and you dirty so-and-sos, even though you're 16 years old, you can't block, and everybody gets rah-rah in the locker room. It is so cliche. It has been played out on every one of those ridiculous dramas. And I bring that up because Sean McVay was that cliche on Sunday. Oh, was he the cliche flipping out 
Offensive lineman Rob Havenstein said that McVay didn't make, quote, much of an adjustment. It was more of a statement. This is what we're going to do, unquote. Translation, McVay flipped out. And so what did McVay do for the second half with the Rams? For the first eight offensive plays in the second half, all of them were run plays. All of them. And if you think that it was something that would annoy, say, Matthew Stafford, wrong. He totally bought in. Matthew Stafford said he loved it. Quote, I was fired up stepping back in the huddle each time with a run play. Those guys were loving it. It was fun, unquote. So yes, it's kind of awkward saying a bunch of grown, muscular, macho men got caught up in their feels, but that's exactly what happened with the Rams yesterday. Williams felt likewise. He said he could feel a shift in the attitude of the offensive unit. And if you're a Rams fan, honestly, you should be happy about that. Because if you can establish the running game, you're pulling players away from pass coverage. That should open things up for Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, Tutu Atwell. Kawhi Leonard said he's optimistic about the upcoming season for him and the Clippers. Quote, we know what we are capable of, and I feel like me feeling a lot better than I was coming into training camp last year. Last year, I was trying to get into things a little bit slow just because of the feeling in my knee, unquote. Not particularly the Queen's English that he was using, but I think you get the idea. Meanwhile, talking about basketball, Jared Vanderbilt over with the Lakers has not played in four consecutive preseason games. Dave McMenamin of ESPN is reporting that the Lakers are monitoring Vanderbilt for having a sore left heel. They still expect him to be ready to go in time for the regular season. By the way, while we're on the subject of the NBA, NBA.com conducted a survey of the GMs. Who could be the biggest steal in the draft? Jaime Jaquez Junior of UCLA, now with the Miami Heat, finished second in the GM poll. And they said the reasons that we've been talking about all summer long, that he is going to be an ideal fit for the culture of the Miami Heat. But Jaquez needs to work on his three-point shooting. Ne Neka Ogubake of the Sparks was named to the All-WNBA second team. She's averaged 19.1 points per game. And by the way, this last season, despite the fact that the Sparks didn't make the WNBA playoffs, she became the second all-time leading scorer in franchise history, behind only Lisa Leslie. But you let me know what you think in the comments thread. Has USC and UCLA gone about the transfer portal in the wrong way? Do you believe that the Rams actually might have a running game soon? And if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We're talking LA sports every single day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corte El Queso production. Take care.